The chairman of the committee of experts that drafted the 1992 constitution is advocating an all-inclusive government that will take away the winner-takes-all syndrome. Nana Dr. SKB Asante says a constitutional amendment in this direction will ensure key appointments of heads of state institutions are done in all-inclusive manner. He spoke on our current affairs program, Hot Issues, yet to be aired on Saturday. People get very, very sensitive on this winner takes all, but it's a real issue. Because what does winner take all mean? It means that at this, by virtue of an election, and by virtue of the election of a president on, a, on the formula of 50 plus one, 50 percent plus one, all powers are transferred to one particular power. You can, I mean, in, 19, uh, in 2012, we got, got nearly 50-50, really, yeah. if you remember. Yeah. Small difference. The entire power shifts. What does that mean? I've given the example of the change of uh, officials and so forth and so on. The change of contractors. Yeah. The change of lawyers, you know, law firms. I went to my, my, uh, my town in uh, one of those um, years, just after an election. Mm -hmm. And, you know, simple, barely literate young men who were involved in cocoa spraying had been rendered jobless. Uh, jobless. Why? Because they were supposed to belong to another party. Have you heard of this incredible situation? So I asked the DC, so where am I to send, to send these people? Mm -hmm. They don't belong to your parties. So are they going to be jobless? You know, it, it doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't. You know. But how so, can we work around this? Yes, well, we can work around it. Actually, um, people may, uh, think that when you say sharing of power mm. is a retrogressive step. I believe that sharing of power means that you have an inclusive government. If we had an ideal situation, I would say, Let's have a coalition government. But you know, this is anathema to certain people. Mm. So the next step is that let us define areas where a national approach is imperative. And let's take And let's that. take those things. Formulation of policies, appointment of certain key uh, people. For example, the appointment of the Electoral Commission. Mm. There's no reason why we should not have a formula for voting which will necessarily involve a substantial number of the opposition members so that they know that he or she has been appointed nationally. Well, let's just say a bit further on this, considering uh, today and what we're marking the Constitution Day, I've been joined on the telephone by a prominent legal uh, practitioner here, Ghanaian lawyer Samo Kujato, for some more analysis on this. Mr. Kujato, thank you for time. Good evening to you. Now, given the dangers uh, with this winner takes all, as identified, for example, the marginalization of perceived political opponents and the feeling of exclusion from the governance process by those who do not belong to the government of the day, would you ascribe to that proposal of considering an all inclusive governance? <laughs> Well, I think it's much more complex than meets the eye, you know, because, um, well, what do we call it? We've had coalition governments in other countries, um, but it is not necessarily the two dominant parties, where virtually there's no other party except the two of them in parliament. Now, you have seen the bickering that goes on in that house, where almost everything is opposed by the other side. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to have a cabinet to me to take decisions with that kind of uh, mentality and the rest of it. You know, when you see countries where there are more than one party forming a government, you often see that because they have, there are so many political parties in 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 the uh, assembly or parliament, as the case may be, you take, take Germany, most countries in Europe, for example, have that. Israel is a typical example. Sure where you find out that there are 
more than 10, 12, 13 of so parties in parliament. And you find out that it's difficult for one party to have a huge majority. So normally, they have to be a combination of parties that can then form a government. But when you have only two of them, uh, where it is so difficult to get them to sit together to agree on anything. In fact, sometimes I am so shocked that a lot of the things which I thought were obvious for them to sit down, because they have committee meetings, co- committees in Parliament, mm-hmm. where the, co- the committees could, are the ones supposed to even advise ministries and the rest of them, or the ministries' issues come before the committee. The committee discuss the matter and then bring the matter to the floor of the House. But you will see that they just don't want to. One party thinks that it's their job to pull the other one down, thinking that by virtue of doing that, the populace will support them so that they can win the next election. But, but respectfully, so it is, is that not the consequence of the winner-takes-all situation? <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is that how are you going to say, uh, are you going to make a constitution to say that it does not matter who wins the election, uh, you must form a coalition government? I mean, that is the issue. You see mm-hmm. that in the last British uh, parliament, the, the Conservative Party was compelled to get the Liberals to join them because they didn't have majority in the House. Mm-hmm. But Labour was, not part, Labour was not part of that government. The Scottish National Party was not part of that government. And so it is not a simple matter as I think is being put forward. I don't know what kind of constitution you're going to create that can be able to do that. And whether that is going to solve any problem because you can actually have chaos upon your head. Because I heard somebody suggesting that well, you can have the Minister for Agriculture uh, 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 to be one party and then the Minister for Finance another party. But we are forgetting something. A Minister of Agriculture cannot function without the Minister of Finance. Absolutely. There was no way they can function. Where, where are they going to budget provision? And who is going to make that budget provision for them? even on the Minister of Finance. So it is not a simple issue as it is. What is happening in our country is the fact that there is too much over-centralization of power. And I thought that that was what the Constitutional Review Committee is supposed to be doing. Right. When some of us take a position and say that, look, there should be political party election at every level so that you can have, let's say, Kumasi can be controlled by, right. let's say, NDC. And Akka can be controlled by, by uh, MPP. Takwadi can be controlled by NDC. Hope can be controlled by MPP. Uh, it means that the government at the local level is what is matters. It's not the central. So, so it's more like a, a, a proportional representation kind of situation? Well, proportional representation, of course, is a good idea if you can have that in your constitutional provision. Some countries have proportional representation, which means that the, but the proportional representation does not solve your governance process. So the proportional representation actually is representation in parliament. Lawyer Sam could you turn down the telephone. But indeed, a conversation that's not ending anytime soon and it's not very new to the many people who have been proposing the solutions to the ails of the winner takes all system.